Hello everyone, today we'll be going over the most asked question on AO ever. How on earth do I make millions in Alicia? How do I breed in Alicia Online? And we will going over, be going over that today. So I'll be explaining how I breed, how I think everyone should breed, and how to make money in the breeding system. So yeah, first of all, let's just go over breeding. Let's look over all of this, what all this means. So this bit here is the other people's horses. So this is other players' horses. So in Alicia Breeding, other players will put up their horses and you will play pay the players money to breed with their horse. And so these are your horses here. And that is how you make money. People, you can put your horses up for breeding and people will pay you to breed with your horses. So that is how the whole system works. So yeah, so here we've got um, the list of the horses you can breed. So we've got their names. We've got the horses lineages. Now lineage is very important. Basically, if you right click on this bit here, you can see the this horse's here lineage compared to the horse that I'm currently riding's um, lineage. Um, and so the lineage is, so this is this horse's parents and their grandparents' um, coats. And this is very important. We'll go over lineages later, but this is how you get uh, this. So this is the lineage here. And so also the number here is, so the plus nine plus one, that shows you how much of the coat is in its like lineage, that makes sense. So this is, this is only a plus one black Sabino because all of its, um, lineage is a different coat so this plus eight overall as you can see it's plus eight because these two count as two points and all of these count as one point so it's not plus nine because there's um one chestnut stockings here so that is how um lineages work so that makes sense uh so yeah and then genetics here so this is the chances this is the chance of you getting this coat based on like i don't even no, honestly, <laughs> I, I would not worry about genetics in the slightest. I don't, I've not honestly looked at genetics since 2017. Um, so it kind of ignore this. It doesn't really affect anything. I never pay attention to it. Um, but this is what this is. Also explains it what is here. The fee is how much it'll cost to breed at one time. And then the pregnancy chance is how much, uh, the chance of you getting the full. So when a horse is born, it'll have the highest amount of hearts it'll have. So I think the majority of the time it's like this, it's like just over three. I think the lower grade or maybe the less good the coat is, the higher the pregnancy chance is. I could be wrong, but there is something that goes into it. I can't remember exactly what it is. But the point is, is that when you first put a horse up, it has its max pregnancy chance. And then once it gets bred, the pregnancy chance goes down. And once the pregnancy chance is all the way down, uh, or down, it cannot go back up again. So this is how players don't make loads of money off of one horse because the horse can only, I mean, it can be bred as many times as you want. Of course, there's going to be horses, see people put horses with no hearts, but the chances of getting a full out of this pregnancy chance compared to this is these are so, so slim. Like you're not hardly gonna get a full out of this, but you might be asking, okay, then why are these horses even up then? Uh, we'll go over that later. So that is pregnancy chance and it can't go back up. So there's no way to make it go back up. Time left is how much time the horse has left, as you can imagine. So when you put a horse up, it will automatically, it'll just be 24 hours and it'll only be taken down after that. So you can see how much time. And then you can add it to the favorites list with this bit here. And then this will just give you the horses you favorited. This is just an easy way to like pick out the horses you want to breed with. And then you can just easily access them here. So yeah, that is this menu here. You can use this bit here to look at horses at different grade. Um, and then the search is you can search particular um, coats you want. And so you can see all the stars here as well, the stats you want. And then in main, you can pick a specific main you want to find and then tails as well. You can pick up to three of each of these, I think. And then with skills, you can only pick two. And you always want to make it be like that. So yeah, that is that. 
Yes, um, so this bit here is pretty simple. So this is just when the horse is highlighted, it'll be the horse you're breeding with. And then also these little icons here is because I currently have these horses up for breeding right now. And if I click on register, it'll show me how many times it's already been bred, how much time it has remaining. Yeah, if you wanna see if your horse has been bred at all, when you have it up, you can just click on register. It won't, it won't actually unregister until you hit confirm. So this is a good way to check up on it and see if it's been bred at all. Uh, but yeah, so that is basically how it works. So you just click on this and then you click on this and it would breed. Um, but yeah, so now that you know how to breed, the question is, what do I breed for? So this, of course, depends on what kind of horse you want, but we are trying to make money right now. This is this video is targeted towards making money. OK, so we want to make we want to breed horses that other people want. This is very important. You want to try because like, let's say you're trying to make money, but you're breeding like, I don't know, like chestnut stockings. Like there's only four pages of chestnut stockings. Like no one's breeding this compared to like if you look at blacks. There is in total 102 pages of blacks. Like that's, there's a lot more people trying to breed these for different reasons, of course. But so the most popular um, coats that people breed for is blacks, amber creams, dapple bays can also make you a good amount of money. I think overos can make money as well. I could be wrong. It's been, a, I think, I mean, there's 28, they, they could make you some money um whites as well whites make some good money i think blue rounds may also make money um i'm not too sure but those are the main coats i don't eat i don't know if black rabbies are still making money the thing is, is when a new yeah i think actually black rabbies 28 pages you can kind of tell if um horses are popular or not depending on how many pages there are um that's how i tell at least so yeah black rabbies are kind of making money but like if you want to be sure go for blacks people always breed for blacks like and amber creams as well but i feel like blacks are a very secure <laughs> a very secure coat to choose to breed and you do want to try to breed one coat you don't want to be like unless you have the money for it when we're starting out we want to have just one coat because of what i mentioned earlier the lineage when you have a plus nine lineage people are going to breed with it more that is higher value than a lower l lineage horse. You know what I'm saying? Picking up and putting down. Okay. So we just decided to breed blacks. And now what, what stat are we going? So the two popular stats in the game at the moment is control and speed. So control is a safe bet. S control blacks always make money. They're always, they're a very safe bet. Speed blacks also make a good amount of money because people who breed them have the money for it. <laughs> people who are breeding black speed horses are like trying to get a good racing horse. So uh, I've also heard that these make a good amount of money. I don't know if speed anything else makes a good amount of money. I, I honestly don't know. I am a control breeder myself. Most of my horses are controlled ba purely because I breed control horses. So let's just say for um, example sake that we're doing this so yeah so we're trying to go for black control horses the best mane and tail people want is a is long and long curlies and also spikies can also make a good amount of money as well and then a long thick and a long curly tail as well but i would not focus on them loads when you first start out because let's see what happens when we do this we're like okay we want to breed these because we want to get them 40k 35k these are expensive horses and when you're starting out you don't have the money for this we do not have the money for this so i would say do not focus on these uh don't breed specifically uh, or just with these horses at the beginning because you don't have you can't afford it <laughs> so we're trying and like you can still get a good horse um with the horses that show up here see we've got a plus nine this is this is a good horse to do she you know what I'm saying? Picking up, put down. Um, but yeah, if you're gonna focus on anything, focus on the tail because there's a higher chance of the horse getting the tail than the mane. I don't know why. It's just a thing. So now we know what to breed for. Now, of course, in here, what are the horses I'm looking for? What horses are we? So I mentioned earlier that this horse is good. This horse is good because it's got um, high pregnancy chance. The stats are also important. I didn't even talk about stats. <laughs> Okay, so basically, you really, really want to try to get 
a good stat horse because what people will breed with is they people are more likely to breed with a horse that has good stats but is ugly rather than a pretty horse with bad stats picking up and putting down that's what you're trying to get stats are so important stats stats lineage and coat are the three most important things in a horse um arguably stats and coats are more more and then lineage and then and then mane and tail come after so do not worry like this horse because it's plus nine and has decent stats this will make money this will definitely make money you know what i'm saying so yeah so we've got this horse here also crop tails yeah, talk about crop tails crop tails some people also like crop tails but i don't it's a thing whatever so when you're breeding horses always always breed grade eight do not when you have lower level horses it'll automatically put you at grade seven do not breed grade seven the stats are never good uh because just because they are lower grade you will not get good enough stat horses to be worth it see how these are all these are all like 76 81 lower 80s like i really wouldn't even touch grade sevens always breed grade eights um because you want like this horse this horse is really good to breed with it's it's plus nine it's cheap and it's at 97 control so this little bottom bit here is the horses and then this top bit here is my horse so if we look through here and i look for good horses to breed with like this horse at 40k i would not breed with this horse this horse is not worth 40k in my opinion just because of the main kind of sucks and it's at 94 like if this was at 97 or something like okay fair enough but like i would not breed this horse also look at this 30k 83 control yeah that's not happening guy <laughs> like this horse at 20k because it's plus nine and also has 95 this could be worth it but like i would try to breed with um don't breed with splits dear lord unless you're trying to get a split don't breed with splits uh obviously this horse i think we talked about this horse earlier i don't know uh but this horse is great 97 at 10k hell yeah oh my gosh this horse not nah, a split we don't want that um melon eh, i wouldn't breed with melon um let's see i don't think um see this one is plus nine it's 10k it's got good bring sets and it's at 88 i would try to like try to breed horses that are around the 90 control area um because it's 88 it's higher 80s i would probably breed with it if i had nothing else to breed with um like 92 this horse is good it's 10k of course there's not always going to be like nice 10ks just chilling because most of the time there isn't um but even if there's like a 20k horse like don't go over 30 especially if you can't afford it like this horse if i was desperate and breed this horse but it's i would not this is a 10k horse that is how you basically choose a horse. I hope this helps. I hope this makes sense. So the next important thing is um, how do I price my horse? So um, pricing horses can be a little bit complicated uh, because there's a lot of things you need to think about. But basically what you should do is you should definitely think about it and not default to putting the horses up for 10k every single time you will lose money definitely if you do this i used to do this all the time so venom here is a 40k horse because he has 92 control he is a plus nine and he is a long mane and a curly uh, long curly tail this he's a very valuable horse and he's definitely worth 40k and so that's what i did when i first put him up um so is alexander here lucifer wolf these are all except yeah well lucifer i mean wolf sorry is only plus six and so that would make his value go down so see there's all these things that go into it so i i would just ask honestly if you're unsure so i put i first put up alexander for 40k and he got bred with two times now you're probably thinking two times that's hardly anything but i got 80k out of him if i were to put him up for 10k right off the bat he would have been bred down to zero pregnancy chance and i probably would have gotten like 120k or something out of that um but because i put him up for 40k at first he still had pretty much all of his hearts so i was able to put him up again and i put him up for 20k this time and he's been bred with four four times there he is so yeah he's on three hearts right now which is still pretty good so i'm gonna put him up for 10k once he's done um being bred for this day 
um, and, I'll, and I'll continue to make even more money out of him. So I'll probably get around 200k out of him at least, which is pretty good. So the reason why the genetics went up when I'm on Cedric is because if you go into horse care and you bring the beauty up to this bit here, the breeding chance is increased. So this is also what you want to do. <laughs> you want to try to uh, put the care all the way up. And how you, so how you um, fill up this bottom bar is by cleaning it. So just clean the bejesus out of your horse. So this first one is feeding and playing and this one is cleaning. So you want to clean your horse until it's pristine. Um, so yeah. So the way you want to manage your horses is you want to have one horse that is like your breeding horse. So Lucifer is my, he is my um, control blacks breeding horse. So he's a plus nine. Um, he also has a pot, which makes my foals that I breed have a chance, a higher chance of getting potential and potential also makes a lot of money. Um, Speed Lambert here is my uh, dappled bay lin horse he only has a medium tail but he has spiky and because he has a plus nine it makes it good as well and he's not been graded up because i was putting up for breeding okay so we'll get into um pot breeding so potential breeding is a whole other thing but basically potentials for those who don't know are like little extra skills horse horses have and they're really good for racing Breeding potentials is really annoying because the chances of your horse having a potential is really low. Twilight's potentials is 94 out of 100 and uh, Cedric's is only 58 out of 100. So yeah, so the better the parent's potential is, the higher it is, the higher chance the foal's potential will be good as well, if that makes sense. I'm kind of glossing over this. If you don't know what potentials are, uh, go look up a video for it because it's a whole other thing. But basically, when you have a horse that's a hundred, so this what this means here is this is a hundred, a horse that had a hundred of a hundred potential bred with another hundred hundred potential. So this is what those parents is. So yeah, so if you're trying to go for like potential breeding, this horse would be what you're going for. And this is why all of these horses here that have no hearts are up because these are good looking. These are good looking, good stats. Look at that, 99 control and they have good pot. And so people will just breed with them with zero hearts because that is how hard it is to get a good potential. So breeding potentials make loads and loads of money. All of the richest players that I know of, they, they do pot breeding. But the reason why potential breeding is so hard and no one really or not a lot of people do it is because in order to level up the potential my lean is really laggy in order to level up the potential you have to grade it up or class it up to class 23 in order for it to be at max so basically it's really time consuming because you basically have to breed a horse that has potential which that in itself takes forever and then you have to grade you have to class up the horse to level 23 and if it's not at 100 or a plus 90 then you have to start it all over again and so people will have lineages of where the whole lineage has a hundred pot and that takes a long time to <laughs> get to and it's just really time consuming but it you get fucking wealthy because people will breed with your horses no matter the pregnancy chance I hope that makes sense. I kind of glossed over that, but I did want to talk about it because it is a thing in breeding. But if you're new to breeding, do not worry about that in the slightest. I don't do it. All players don't. Just focus on what I told you before. People will put initials in front of their horses so you know whose horse it is. So when I put horses up for breeding, I put RFM in front of it so people know it's my horse. This is just this is especially good when you do pot breeding because people if people know you have good potential horses they will trust your horses and they'll breed with it um there's also abbreviations people will put on their horses for like their parents the horse's parents or the potentials and things i'll put them on the screen here because i can't really explain them very well um but yeah that's just that and also the um names things but yeah i hope that makes sense i hope i covered everything 
Um, this was not scripted, like I said earlier, so I apologize if it's all over the place. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comment section. I am so happy to help and and explain things. Um, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful, um, and I'll see you all later. Bye, guys!